like I told you before, you are people that are responsible to their own actions. You are choosing it by yourself to come to my classes. No one is forcing you. You know that. It's, you're very lucky. You're very lucky. You're very lucky. It's very good. So, like you know, <coughs> we're talking on that issue again and again and again and again, and we're going to continue to talk on that. On all of that wonderful thing that caused Emunata Ratzon, the faith of the will, that the man is going to believe in himself and going to understand the importance of to want Hashem it Barach more and more and more. But I wanted to share a little bit from that understanding that I had yesterday in Sudash Lishit in the Shiur of Arab Shalom. And Arab Shalom yesterday said there is an act, a, a concept that calls Metzach Anachash, the forehead of the snake. From that forehead of the snake, Rabbeinu is exp explaining that forehead of the snake like the forehead of Goliath. That Goliath, he was fighting with Am Israel. What he was doing? He was stopping them. He was stopping Am Israel from saying Kriyat Shema in the morning and in the evening. That was the main thing that he was doing. He was making them afraid that they will not going to be able to control, to control, to function because of their fear that he's coming, that there's going to be a war, that something's going to happen. And he was shouting and roaring and make them all scared. And by that, he was making them to believe, chas shalom, to fall from simple faith, from holy faith in Hashem Barach, because they would not say Kriyat Shema that Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, so they could not believe anymore. And he wanted to achieve that for 40 days straight, one after the other, that for 40 days, Am Yisrael will not going to say Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. And he knew that if they're going to lose that, that Emunata Yichud, the faith in, in one, in the, what? Unity. Unity, the faith in, faith in unity. So, what's going to happen? He going to receive the power means that the forehead of the snake, this is that forehead of Goliath, this is those horrible thoughts that he's got in his head, are standing against that simple faith. The simple faith of unity. unity. Of unity. Emunata Yehud. And then Arab Shalom yesterday compared it, the faith of, of unity, faith of unity, to Metzach Haratzon to the forehead of the will. This is the first time I think that I heard it. It's written in Likutei al -Khot. So probably I learned it already, but I didn't remember that. That the forehead of the will is standing against the forehead of the snake, of the kfirot. So the faith of unity, it's the faith of the will. It's Emunat Aratzon. And who was that one that came and went Mm, mm, conquered Goliath in the end. It was David Amelech, but he wasn't a king then. It was David Ben Ishai, Bet Alachmi. He wasn't David Hamelech. We're talking about a simple guy, a shepherd that was working, that had, went through a lot of difficulties in his life, and he heard that there is a man that is cursing Hashem Barach, that is pushing Am Israel down and failing them and trying to, 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 to push them down from them, their simple faith of unity. And he decided to strengthen himself in that faith of the will, to believe that he himself, who was he? He was nothing. But he himself had that power to stand against Goliath and he threw those five chalukeh nachal, five stones, and vatitba even bemitzcho. And that stone, Titba, I say Titba, Titba, sunk into his forehead. He killed him. He broke everything. He broke everything. And you remember, if you remember that Midrash that is saying that Goliath, he had an iron mm -hmm. uh, mask on his forehead. But in heaven, there was an argument. The angel of the stone 
came to the angel, to the minister of the, of the iron and told him, if you're going to surrender to me this time, I'm going to give you the privilege that Am Israel going to keep the mitzvah of Brit Milah circumcised with you and not with me. When Abraham circumcised himself, he mm -hmm. was doing it with a stone, with an even tzur, with an even, right? Flint. Flint, with a, with a stone. So the mitzvah of circumcise of Brit Milah was in the hands of the minister of the stone until that day. But in that day, the stone gave up on that merit and was ready to give it in the hands of the iron. And today you're not allowed to make a Brit Milah with nothing except of an iron, except of Sakin Barzel, kosher knife. So you see that the merit, how that miracle happened to David Melech. By the holiness, by Kedushat Brit, by the covenant. You see that because the David HaMelech was so holy, so the angels in heaven were fighting for him. They opened the path for him. Means David HaMelech himself cannot fight with Goliath. No way. Forget it. Drop it. It's not an option. You yourself, with your tiny wheel, cannot conquer the forehead of the snake. Reality. If you check things, by the wisdom of that snake, the wisdom of, the, of nature. But if you believe in God, if you believe in Hashem, if you conquered all of those wisdoms that are coming from that forehead of the snake, and you believe in Hashem, and you're working on your holiness, and you're giving powers to the Gdusha, and Rav Shalom explained yesterday that the power that that forehead of the snake receives, he's receiving it from old people that are not increasing the Kedusha daily. And the forehead, Lehavdil, the forehead of the wheel receives his Kedusha from old people that are increasing the Kedusha every day. So he said, how are you going to increase the Kedusha every day? By praying 30 minutes every day on Kedusha. This is how every day you're adding more Kedusha and more Kedusha on yourself. In that it all depends in how much a man is strong to keep on wanting Hashem it Barach. And even that it looks so far, and even if it looks impossible, you have to work on yourself that you are going to build your own faith in yourself, that if Hashem will want, you can succeed. Because only when Hashem wants, so a person can succeed. Only Birzot Hashem Ish, only when Hashem is looking on a man and he's choosing him and he's saying you're going to succeed, so he's succeeding. There is a place in Likutei Moharan that Rabbeinu is writing that if a man is asking for things and those things are so far from him in the nature of creation, means that person supposed to be poor for the rest of his life. This is his life story. He has to be poor for his tikkun. And now he decided to pray on money. It's very far that you're going to achieve that thing, even with thousands and thousands of hours of tefillah, because it's not his life story. He doesn't need that in his life. So why would Hashem going to help him in that? So those prayers are going to give him faith, going to help him to grow, to, to succeed in life. But to achieve money, if it's not his life story, and he doesn't need it for his tikkun, it's very far that you're going to achieve it. So Rabbeinu is saying, this is the time that you should go to a righteous man. And then that righteous man, that he is, and he is, he is explaining that, um, and as, as that, that righteous man becomes to be like a matchmaker, like a Shadchan. And he's saying, you're coming to the man that he is, Sifte Kohen Yishmeru Da'at, Vetorah Yilamdum Yilmedu Yevakshu Mipihu. If you go to that Kohen, to that righteous man, that his m lips are keeping the wisdom, and asking Torah from him, you're coming to him to learn Torah from him, by that becomes to be a Shiduch. By that you can make a match between two things that are very, 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 very far. Very, very far. So, you should know that by that, that you're following the advice of righteous people and coming to them to be blessed by them, and you are going to pray in Kivrei Tzadikim, and you're doing your part of Avodat Hashem as much as you can, by that you should strengthen your faith in yourself, that also Hashem Ibrach can make miracles with you. And everyone can come to that place. It all depends in your will, in how much, you, how much power you're going to put on that in your life. How much you're going to invest 
in, invest in your life, in, in your growth process. How much you care about yourself, how much you want to succeed in life. Because there is a person that when he sees a closed gate, he's saying, all right, the house of Arab is closed. Um, it's not for me, maybe another day, and this is it. And this is where he and he, Harav separated. He will never gonna see Harav anymore. This is it, because he's gonna have a few more difficulties in his life, and he give up. But there is a person that when he's knocking on their door and he see that it locks, he's saying to himself, what are they trying to do to me? They're trying to close the gates of Tusha for me. So what's gonna be with me? He's not become panic, but he m m finds more motivation to, to put more powers on that. All right, I'm going to pray on that. I'm going to come again. Maybe I'm going to check when the right time to come. I'm going to ask people that were there, that knocked on their door, and that door been open for them. I'm going to ask, I'm going to pray on that. And the difficulties increase the will. Rabenu is comparing that to a little baby that is playing with a certain mm, puppet, a game that he's got. And he doesn't really care about that puppet. But if now you're going to take that from him and run away with it, you increase the will for that baby to want that puppet, and he will never going to give up on that. Now he's going to do whatever, only because that you took it from his hands. This is the wisdom of what it's written, many ought. The letters of the word many ought, obstacles, difficulties, it's the same letters of the word neimut, pleasant. David Amelech is saying, Chavalim nafluli baneimim. Chavalim, those are the chovlim, means all of the difficulties, all of the suffering that he had, they fell and been replaced in neimim, pleasant, good feelings. Means that when you break the many oath, the difficulties that you have in your life, you're going to find the neimut, the pleasant, the noam, the noam elokim. Suddenly, that concept, Noam, pleasant, <coughs> join the word Elohim. Elohim, it's judgment. It's not kindness. Suddenly, all of the judgments, all of the difficulties, that all of the obstacles, all of the limits that a man got in his life becomes to be Noam, pleasant. He realized how much Hashem is good. He realized how much Hashem is helping him to build himself, to believe in himself. If we're going to try to see and to look on all of the righteous people of our holy nation, we're going to see that each and every one of them was, was an individual, was a fighter, was alone. He was, he was running to serve Hashem in Barach. Like Rabbeinu is writing on Avraham Avinu that he is the, the first model, the first example that we can learn from him, from Avraham Avinu. Echad Aya Avraham. Avraham was an individual. He was one. And he wasn't confusing. From nothing. He was serving Hashem Barach just only by that, that he was one. That he thought in his own opinion that he's the only one in the world. And he wasn't looking at all on people that are trying to stop him from serving Hashem Barach. Not on his father and not on other people that try to stop him. Just like that he's the only one in the world. And this is what it's written. Echad Avraham. One was Avraham. And like that, everyone that wants to enter in Avodat Hashem, he cannot enter into Avodat Hashem just only by that. That he's going to think. Rabbeinu is saying, cannot. Rabbeinu is saying, cannot. You cannot enter into Avodat Hashem if you don't have that aspect. That you hold yourself like that you're alone in the world. And you're not going to look on no one that is stopping you. Like his father and his mother or his father-in-law or his wife and his children and on. Or the rest of obstacles, difficulties that he's got from other people in the world. That are laughing at him and trying to avoid him and to push him, reject him from serving Hashem Barach. And he needs not to look at them and not to feel them at all. Just going to be in that aspect. Of one was Avraham, like he's in the individual, alone in the world. I heard a few days ago an amazing story. That huge righteous man, the Marosh, Rabbi Eliezer Shlomo Shik, that he is the chief rabbi of the Hasid Breslev community in Yavniel, and he's got also a, a community in, uh, in, in New York, I don't know what, Boro Park, I don't know what. Monsi. Monsi. Oh, again. I don't know. So, he, f few, few, long, long years ago, 30, 40, maybe 50 years ago, he decided, he went close to Breslev, 
and he decided to to break the market to 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 type the books of right. print books of Rabbi Nachman Breslev in the cheapest edition of them all and he started in one day to sell thousands of copies in one dollar Likutei Moran one dollar Likutei Moran and he made a mess in, in the Breslev market Breslev, Breslev stores <laughs> went, went crazy and people came to him people from Jerusalem, Hasidah Breslev and threatened him with a gun came to him and told him you're breaking the market we have the rights of Rabenu Schuyot Yotzrim on the type on that Pasa you're not allowed to do that but he was very very strong on that it's written on him the, the story that he mm, told that righteous man wrote over a mm, thousand books I think something like that he's huge 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 genius amazing and um, he wrote that one time he he, wa he, he, wa he had a dream, a vision, I don't know what, a dream. And in his dream, he saw Rabbi Nachman and Rabbi Nathan walking together in a field. And suddenly, when Rabbi Nachman saw him, so he went, he left Rabbi Nathan over there and went to him, to, to the Marosh, and started to talk to him and cheered him up and strengthened him and gave him a few words of chizuk. And then went back to Rabbi Nathan. And after a while, Rabbi Nathan came to him, to the Marosh, in the same dream, and told him that in the beginning, when he saw that Rabbi Nachman left him and went to talk to that young Avrech, so he was a little bit makpid on that, it was hard for him. And then when Rabbi Nachman came back and he told him, who is he, who he gonna be, who is he? So he said, so I understood. And from now on, you should know that I'm gonna be with you in all of your handwrites, and I'm gonna write with you. I'm gonna give you Seata Dishmaya. And he's writing, uh, you cannot understand how Mamash. He's writing while he's talking in the phone and he's writing Kuntresims and books and, and, and he's doing an amazing, amazing job in, in Breslev. So he came one day to his rabbi, Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Bender, to cry. And he Mamash started to cry from a broken heart. He said, what am I trying to do? Just trying to do a fatza, like Breslev's Hasidim supposed to make a fatza. To distribute the light of Rabenu, and I found a way to type it on the cheapest paper, and, and, and on, and on, and on, and people came to me and threatened me with a gun, and what should I do? Am I doing something wrong? And he's crying. Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Bender strengthened him, gave him so much chizukim and compliments, and told him, you're doing the right thing, this was the will of Rabbi Nathan that said, Yafutsu Mainotecha Chutza, that just need to distribute that light of Rabenu and on, and this is the will of Rabenu and Rabenu was talking on that, and on, and on, and on. And how Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Bender finished the conversation, he told him, and what would be if I'm gonna start arguing with you? Even if I'm gonna argue with you, is it a reason that you're gonna stop doing that wonderful afatsa that you're doing? This is how they finished their conversation. And from that day and on, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Bender was arguing on him in public. He was talking on him bad things in public, saying that it's not the way of Breslev, and that it's not allowed to do like that in Breslev, and it's not the will of Rabenu, and not allowed to listen to him. Crazy, crazy wild story. But happened in reality. Happened just now happened, mamash, in the eyes of righteous people that are alive today. So what we should believe? We should believe in ourselves. We should understand that if you got something from your rabbi, even if your rabbi is going to tell you something different, you're not allowed to listen to him anymore. If now everyone going to say, not going anymore to Uman Rosh Hashanah, everyone, you should say, I'm going. I'm going. Arab Shalom going to say, don't go, you should go. Even if it sounds hard for you. If you clarified it, checked it for yourself inside, that Um and Rosh Hashanah, it's clear, there is no doubts about it, that you need to do one hour it bodedut every day, that you need to go to the mikveh, that you want to be religious to serve Hashem, that you need to talk to Hashem, that you want to guard your eyes, nothing that's gonna happen to you is supposed to push you, to reject you from that. You have to be stubborn more than iron, more than lions, more than I don't know what. Never to surrender to what that you clarified and checked inside of yourself that it is truth. If you checked it and you came to a conclusion, this is the truth, you're not allowed to move from that. For that you need to have a very strong faith in yourself. 
Because the Yetzer Ara, the snake, he came to Adam Arishon and he started to argue with them and to give her reasons why to Chavai Menu. Why? Why Akadosh Baruch Hu actually he did want you to taste and to touch and to hold and to, to, and to eat and on. He convinced them what it means. Adam Arishon, you heard from Akadosh Baruch Hu himself that you're not allowed to eat. It was clear for you. You never planned to eat. But when he came, you started to have doubts in yourself. Because he came with all of his wisdoms, with all of his examples, with all of his tricks. That you are not going to be sure in yourself. That you won't have your self-confidence. The Alakha is saying that when a man sees an elephant, he needs to say a bracha on that. Meshana Abriyot. If he see a monkey, he needs to say a bracha on that. If he see a man that he is so red, a man that he is so white or very black, he needs to say bracha on that. If a man is walking and he sees a place that miracles happen to him, he needs to say bracha on that. Today people are not saying those brachot. And if they are, they're not saying it with Shem Malchut. They're saying, Baruch Shasali Nes Bamakom Azeh, Baruch Shekocho Urotom Aleolam. They're afraid to mention the name of Hashem it Barach. They're not sure. Why are you not sure? Open Mishnah Brura. Read the, the, the fat letters, the big letters, and then read the thin ones, and understand that halakha, and if you still have doubts, go to a rabbi, make a phone call to a rabbi, ask, check it, in Rabbi Google, what's the halakha, you <laughs> clarify the halakha, you know the halakha, keep it. Why am not keeping it? You're afraid. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid to believe in yourself? You learned that halakha already. You know that if you, Hashem saved you and made, saved your life and you saw a miracle, you flipped with your car a few times and you went out without a scratch, it's a miracle. Hashem saved your life. Now you need to say bracha with the name of Hashem and with malchut in His kingship also. It's halakha. No, you're afraid. Why are you afraid? This is the war. The war is that you're not going to believe in yourself or that you're going to believe in yourself. Because if you're going to believe in yourself, nothing can stop you. Nothing, nothing. Because if you're going to believe in yourself, people are going to believe in you. Because if you believe in your product, people are going to buy it from you. But if you don't believe in yourself, who are going to buy you? Who are going to take you? Who are going to accept what did you have to say if you don't believe in yourself? What are you selling? Lies? You don't believe in yourself. And you're trying to play like you believe in yourself. No. Work on that. That really you're going to believe in yourself. This is what the Tarav Shalom said and brought that amazing, amazing Chidush Torah of the Rabbi Mikloisenburg. The Admor Mikloisenburg. That he said that he, he explained the, the move of, of Esther Malka. Why it was so hard for Esther Malka to accept what that Mordechai is saying to her. That, uh, that everyone needs to fast and that he's wearing sacks and torn clothes. Why it was so hard for, for, for Esther? But it chalchal. She, she became sick from it. Why? Because she said to Mordechai, you taught me differently. You taught me that in the times of decrees, you should go to the streets and to be happy. And now in the time of the decree, you're telling me that I should fast? That I should mourn, that I should cry, that I should wear sack on, your, on, my, on, my, on my body? This is what that you're telling me? You taught me differently. I don't want to accept your opinion. She was arguing on Mordechai, with Mordechai. And in the end, Rabbanan called the Megillah, the scroll, after Esther. That Lemaise, we're going to learn the Halakha from Esther. That in the time of decree, you should celebrate. You should wear your stramels and go to the streets and to be happy. And to dance in the streets. And this is the halakha that we're learning from uh, uh, Rabbi Admor Mikloisenburg is explaining that to us. That you learn it from Esther, that you learn it from the scroll. That the Rabotenu told us that you can read the Megillah to make the feast even in 11th to Adar, even in 12th of Adar. And the miracle happened only in Yudalet in the 14th and in the 15th. And how can you celebrate before the salvation, before the Geulah? How can you celebrate? Because by that opinion of Esther Amalka, that the Megillah is called after her, you have a reason to be happy in the time of decree. In the time that now people are shooting, Arabim are shooting missiles on Am Israel, we need to go to the streets and to dance, and to clap our hands, and to sing, and to praise Hashem. Two days ago, a poor woman died on the way to the shelter because she heard the alarm, because of her fear and anxieties. Nothing happened. 
Just see what, this is the, the only one that died. Because of fear, because of stress, nothing happened. Nothing is happening. Can you realize what's going on? And Rav Shalom said in Shabbos, you think that only we see the miracles? He said, also the non-Jews, also the nations, they're looking. No one can understand that. Every bombing, every terror, terror attack that was in the United States, 20 people died, 70 people died, 150 people died. In the war in the Gulf, 39 rockets and the Skadim fell in Eretz Israel. Nothing happened. One person died from heart attack, exactly like now. Nothing happened. One Skad fell on a building in Iraq of American soldiers. Over 100 soldiers died. 294. 294. Soldiers died from one Skad, one missile. From Iran to Iraq. 39 fell to Eretz Israel. Nothing happened. Can you explain it except of by that simple faith of unity? That Hashem is one. That Hashem is protecting us. So we know, we don't have no reason to be in fear and in stress. If it's your day, you cannot stop that day. David Amelech couldn't stop his day. When it was his day, he died. And he asked for Hashem Barach, and Hashem told him it's going to be in Shabbos. And he learned all day and he tried to save himself, to protect himself in death, from death. He could not. He died in that Shabbos that he was supposed to die. If it's your day, no shelter, no, nothing going to help you. No masks, gas masks, nothing. It's imaginations. You're going to die from a heart attack with that mask in the shelter. Not going to help you. From suffocating. You're going to forget to, to release the plug. That, that. It's happened. And if it's not your time, nothing in the world can kill you. Nothing can touch you. So wow, it's the time of decree. You hear those, those horns, you hear all of those alarms. You just need to sing and to dance, like that I was doing with my family in Shabbos. In Shabbos, we had an alarm. The kids are looking to the sides what to do. We're preparing third meal, we're dancing. We said, We were dancing, we were singing in the house, holding hands, all of the family. What? You can stop the missiles if you're going to run to the shelter. Who knows where we have a shelter in Beis Israel in the world? <laughs> Probably house of so many rats. You want to, you're not allowed to push, uh, push Arabs and rats from the house in the, <laughs> especially not in Shabbos. It's a war and the war is on the happiness, on the simcha, on hope, on faith, on that the war is. You cannot conquer it people that are between us, people that inside, working as farmers, as, as doctors in hospitals, you cannot, you cannot remove them, you cannot take them out, you cannot, only Hashem can do that. Only Hashem can reveal His kingship, only Hashem can win that war for us. And for Him, it's so easy, it's so easy. We just need to praise Him, we just need to crown Him, we just need to, to give Him back the kingship, the Mluchal Hashem. To bring it back to his hands, to crown him, to say, Hashem, you're the king, Hashem, we love you, Hashem, we count on you, Hashem, in you we trust, Hashem, we love you, and to continue to do that. And when that forehead of the wheel, the faith that you have in yourself, that you desire to serve Hashem, and that you want to, to, to serve Hashem in Imsirut Nefesh, on that the verse is saying, Il Malach Hareva, that when that faith is standing up, Back again, the faith in yourself, the faith in Hashem Barach, the faith that Hashem loves us, that He never left us. When it's standing back up and you are strong in your faith and you're strengthening other people to believe in themselves also, by that, those foreign faith, Emunot Kozviot, are falling. The forehead of the snake is falling down. He doesn't have no power. A small stone from the hand of David Ben Ishai. You cannot crown him in the day before. You cannot say David Amelech, he wasn't king at all. Eliyahu told us that he was 17 years old, this is it. A young guy, a shepherd, that took few stones to fight with a giant. And all of the way he was praying, please Hashem, protect me, please Hashem, help me, please Hashem, let me do it only for you, only for your honor, for your respect, that no one, for Am Israel, for, for your honor, for... This is it. And he went with a strong will. From that we should believe in ourselves. 
And if you think this is the rebuke that Shmuel Anavi said to Shaul Amelech, Hakatan Be'enecha, you're small in your eyes. You don't um, uh, appreciate yourself. You don't estimate yourself. You don't understand your importance. Who are you? How valuable, how precious you are. And you don't need to be Shaul Amelech to be so important. It's enough for you that you are part of Am Israel, that you're one of the children of Akadosh Baruch Hu, that you're one of the children of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and that receive that amazing promise that Akadosh Baruch Hu is going to be with us forever. You have that. You're backed up already. Akadosh Baruch Hu is supporting you. You're safe. You're protected. You don't need to be afraid. And like the Noam Elimelech said, and even if it's a time of decree, and even if a man needs to go to hell, needs to die, he should do it with happiness. The Noam Elimelech said that if they're going to tell him in heaven that he needs, after the trial and judgment day, that he needs to go to hell, he's going to jump to hell with happiness, with joy. Why? He said, because I'm going to ask the angels, who said that commandment? Who said that I need to go to hell? It's you, one of you, the angels? They're going to say no. It's a decision of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If they're going to tell me that Hashem wants me to go to hell, I'm going to know for sure that hell is the best place for me and I'm going to jump to hell in happiness, in joy. And Rav Shalom said, a man that haven't kept that word all of his life cannot say it in the last day of his life. Only because that in every decree, in every difficulty that he had in his life, he was blessing on it. Like the Mishnah in Brachot is saying, Chayav Adam Levarech Al Ara'a Keshem Shu Mevarech Al Atova. A man have to bless on bad things that happens to him in his life, exactly like that he's blessing on the good. For sure we need to strengthen ourselves to say thank you on the good things. This is the real first level. But if you understand that, now you need to follow to the next one and to thank Hashem Barach on your difficulties. To thank Hashem Barach and Rabotenu said, Chayav, you have to. It's not a recommendation that it's something good, a good hanhaga that you're going to keep if you're going to say thank you Hashem, bless Hashem. No, you have to. Every Jew, every man have to come to that place that he's thanking Hashem Barach on the bad life that he's blessing Hashem on the good. Means not to care at all. Like we said on Avraham Avinu, he's not looking to the sides. No obstacles, no difficulties. No bad things in his life at all. He doesn't see that. When those righteous people were, came um, from that, the, Abal Shem Tov sent them, no Abal Shem Tov. Who sent them to Rabbi Zusha? The Magdi Mezrich sent them to Rabbi Zusha. They came to him, they told him, oh, you remember, you, you fixed me last time. No, 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 no. Send them? My yeah, okay. Oh, it, One came to the Noam Elimelech and said to him, I want to understand how you should bless Hashem on the bad things like you bless on the good things. So he told him, go to my brother Rabbi Zusha. So I went to Rabbi Zusha, looking for him, where is Rabbi Zusha? There's no Rabbi Zusha. Finally he said, where is Zusha? I said, oh, Zusha over there in a the corner of the village, went, saw a broken house, um, 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 kids uh, bare, barefoot with no shoes, walking, um, poor people, no door. Where is Rabbi Zusha? No Rabbi Zusha. Where is Zusha? Oh Zusha, he was soon gonna come. Came Rabbi Zusha. He asked him, um, your brother, the Noam Elimelech, sent me to ask you, how can a man understand and bless Hashem Barach on bad things like his blessing on the good? So he told him, I'm the wrong person to ask. He told him why. He said, I don't have nothing bad in my life. I never felt bad. I don't know. <laughs> Poor children, no bread to eat, no, f no shoes on their legs, walking on bare, f on, on bare land. Poor wife, torn clothes, broken roof. In Ukraine 250 years ago, what are we talking about? Poverty that we cannot imagine to ourselves. When those paritzim are, are, are doing whatever they want and, and how you say, torning? Me'anim, touring, torturing, torturing, Am Israel, whenever they want, however they want. In a generation like that, he's saying, I don't see no bad, there is no bad at all. This is a simple faith. And if you think it belongs to Rabbi Zusha, it belongs to us. This is our inherit, this is our Yerusha. 
We are ma'aminim b'nei ma'aminim. We're believers, sons of believers. And if it's hard for you, you need to pray on that. To believe in Hashem Itbarach, that Hashem's got all of the powers, that Hashem is all good. This is that Shema Israel, Hashem Elokein, Hashem Echad. That the judgments are coming from the kindness. That Elokeinu is coming, that Hashem wa Elokim. That all of the judgments are coming from the kindness. Hashem wa Elokim. Enod Milvado, there is nothing except of Hashem. It's all good. It's our job not only to believe in that, also to distribute that, to spray it to the world, to let everyone seize it, that everyone gonna be able to taste it. Ta'amur u'kitov Hashem, they're gonna taste and they're gonna see that Hashem is good. If we're not gonna believe in that, how are we gonna tell them to believe in that? So we first have to try that. How are you gonna try that? Go to the fields. The king is in the fields. Amelech Basadeh. Go to the field. Talk to Hashem. Convince Hashem to bring you miracles. Tell him, Hashem, make wonders in my life. Change my life. Change my life, Hashem. And don't leave the field until you're going to see salvation. And if you don't have the power to do it in the same day, so in the day after, come again. To another hour, to another hour, until you're going to be saved. If you cannot do six, you cannot do three, you cannot do two, okay, come every day to do your one hour. And in that one hour, hold Hashem like you're holding something real. We need to say the word like, just to understand it. Hold Hashem in your hands. Tell Him, Hashem, I'm not letting you go until you're going to bring my salvation. And do that and you're going to be answered. אמר רבי חנין, אמר רבי חנין, הכל המעריך בתפילתו, אין תפילתו חוזרת ריקם. Your prayer gonna be answered. Just believe in yourself, go, believe that Hashem loves you. That Hashem wants to give you more than you want to receive. Just there are things that you need to go through. For your tikkun you have to go through those things. That when you're gonna receive your salvations, you're gonna be humble. You're not gonna be arrogant. You're gonna have the vessel to contain it. You're gonna remember that it's all from Hashem. The Bala Sulam is explaining, I told you that once, that when a man is praying to receive something and Hashem didn't give him that yet, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very good situation. Why? Because then Hashem has got all of the powers and you're humble, you don't have nothing in your hands. And this is the right way. This is reality. But if you've been heard already, and Hashem gave you what that you need, so now you have what that you need, and you don't need Hashem anymore, so something is wrong here. So until you're going to come to that place, that even after that you're going to receive what that you're asking for, and in that day you're going to hold yourself like zero, and you will feel that you don't have nothing. And you're going to understand that it's a free gift. And you're going to know that Hashem can take it in a minute. In a moment. On the spot. And you're going to know that it belongs to Hashem. Even that it's in your bank account or in your hands or under your chupa or whatever. Only then Hashem is going to give it to you. Why? Because He loves you. Because He doesn't want you to damage, your, damage yourself with receiving things that you don't have the vessel to contain. It's going to damage you more than to stay in poverty. To stay in your poverty, by that poverty, you're growing. The Gemara is saying, I think it's in Masechet Chagiga or in Masechet Ta'anit, that poverty is the biggest gift of them all. HaKadosh Baruch Hu looked for a gift to look, to give something good for Am Yisrael, and he couldn't find nothing else except of poverty, aniyut. And the Gemara is saying that that poverty, that aniyut, is good for Am Yisrael. Because by that poverty, Am Yisrael are coming to good attributes, to Midot Avot, to humility, to Achna'at, surrender themselves under Hashem Midbarach, and to pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and to faith. Simple things that required. And if now you're going to have all of the things that you're asking, but you won't be humble, means you haven't prayed enough to receive it with prayer. Because if you receive something and you haven't prayed on it, the Yetzirah for sure is going to tell you, you deserved it, you're righteous, you achieved it, it's yours, you belong it, you made it, you're a genius, you're so talented. All of the imaginations like you have a certain being. 
But if you prayed and you prayed and you prayed and you prayed and you saw that you're not receiving it, and you saw that this is it, that you pray and you're not receiving it, and then you received it, you're going to know for sure that it's from Hashem and you're not going to forget it. This is why Am Israel, even though that they were very holy in the generation of going out from Egypt, still they didn't pray on it enough. And every good thing that they received, they ruined it. Only Moshe that for years on years he was building vessels, 60 years he was praying in the desert, in the Sinai desert, screaming to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he had the vessels to contain. He could contain. Our job is to push ourselves straight into those paths of righteous people, to follow them, to take their advice, to keep their advice, and not to expect no reward. To thank Hashem Itbarach on the good and on the bad, on the difficulties. And to thank Itbar Hashem Itbarach. And especially in those days, there is an alarm, uh, alarm, Rav Shalom told us that last Wednesday. You need to go outside to the streets and to dance in the streets, clap your hands, sing, praise Hashem Itbarach, convince other people to join you. By that you're going to protect your, your streets, protect your neighborhoods, protect the city, protect all of Am Israel. Simple faith to dance, praise Hashem Itbarach, counting on Chachamim. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.